Welcome back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. You know, in my mind, I believe that August 22nd should, from here on out, become a national holiday. And here's why. Because Anthony Fauci has announced that he is retiring from his position. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> He has been the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases for literally decades, as well as being an advisor to many presidents, starting with Ronald Reagan. And after all of this time, he's finally out. But it's not immediate. He released his statement on August 22nd, which is why I believe it should be a holiday. But he will be finishing out the year and officially leaving in December. So that's when the real celebration will begin. Obviously, in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, it looks like there's going to be a red wave. He does not want to face any more heat from Rand Paul. Maybe he wants to get out. But at the same time, and some people pointed this out on Twitter, do we really have ballsy enough Republicans that will actually investigate him and everything with COVID? But, you know, the midterms are coming up. Maybe we're clearing house, getting some new folks in. I mean, Liz Cheney is out. Brian Stelter just got booted from CNN. Don Lemon might be getting booted from CNN. Things are happening. So, you know, we'll see. But before we get into the meat of this story, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that bell so that you never miss a comment section episode. And, of course, the first capsule of my merch collection is out now. You can go to dailywire.com slash Brett to check it out. All right. I'm so excited about this. I hate this little man. He's such a slimy little troll man. Disclose TV tweeted out and said, Justin, Dr. Fauci announces resignation as NIAID director and chief medical advisor to Biden. And then here is his little statement that he released. He said, I am announcing today that I will be stepping down from the positions of director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and chief of the NIAID laboratory of immunoregulation, as well as the position of chief medical advisor to President Joe Biden. I'll be leaving these positions in December of this year to pursue the next chapter of my career. Now, this is an important note. He is not retiring and riding off into the sunset into some jail cell where maybe he should be. No, he is just leaving this position and is going to take his medical expertise and passions elsewhere. He goes on to say that it was the honor of a lifetime to serve in this position and all of the presidents that he served. Uh, and here he continues about his future plans. He says, while I am moving on from my current positions, I am not retiring. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. Don't worry, you simp-cucked Americans who love him. Uh, after more than 50 years of government service, I plan to pursue the next phase of my career while I still have so much energy and passion for my field. And one of the scariest things to me is that he's talking in this statement about training future scientists to fight against these future infectious diseases. Like, my God, does that mean we're going to be back in lockdown again? If so, you need to start investing in precious metals. And the best way to do that is through Bullion Max, which is a direct to consumer or precious metals retailer, which will help you diversify your portfolio into precious silvers and golds that will help you secure your family in times of crisis. And I love Bullion Max because they make it so easy and not intimidating. You can buy online without ever talking to a salesperson and they ship the metals directly to your house. Shipping is fully insured. It is all taken care of. If you want to get started, go to bullionmax.com slash cooper to get the silver starter kit at employee pricing. Again, that is bullionmax.com slash cooper to get your special offer unique to my listeners. Because while I'm hoping that Anthony Fauci's legacy will be tarnished in the off chance that it is revered, you gotta be protected. He goes on and says, thanks to the power of science and investments in research and innovation, the world has been able to fight deadly diseases and help save lives around the globe. I am proud to have been a part of this important work and look forward to helping to continue doing so in the future. Good riddance to you, Anthony. The first tweet that I saw was from Greg Price, who is just fantastic. If you're not following him, you should be. Uh, and this really just hits the nail on the head. He said, the legacy of Dr. Fauci will forever be a grandparent dying alone in a hospital room while he does another photo shoot for a magazine cover. I mean, we're bringing down the mood here, but that's as clear as you can get. And in case you've forgotten about the photo shoots that he did while the economy was shut down, we were locked in our homes, kids were kept out of school, we were forced to be vaccinated and masked, and people were left alone to die in hospital rooms. Here's your reminder. In style, the king of swagger, 
Dr. Anthony Fauci. And then, of course, he was a Times Person of the Year, I believe, one of the 100 most influential people. His face makes me angry. It's just, it's just disgusting. And if you're new here and you're wondering why his little pee face makes me so angry, well, it might be because of the flip-flopping nature of his science trademarked where he said the science was settled when obviously it was not the authoritarian nature of his recommendations to our government about how to beat covid the fact that he gained millions of dollars and his fame skyrocketed over the last three years his connections to gain of function research i don't know those are just a few that i could name off the top of my head <laughs> speaking of the flip-flopping nature somebody tweeted out and said i'm sure he'll change his guidance on this as well give him a month yeah he'll be like never mind i'm not retiring biden needs me do you know how good it is to have you back in this office? No, they're both senile old men. He's 81. Why do we have so many old people in government? Like, please, go live at a Margaritaville. You have lived long enough and made enough money in government. Shoe fly, move on. Another account tweeted out and said, it looks like Fauci's career won't survive another winter of death. Do you guys remember that? Where the White House sent out that memo saying that if you're unvaccinated, you will be facing a, a, a winter of severe illness and death. Somehow I survived. <laughs> Siraj uh, tweeted out, lighting my Fauci prayer candle in memoriam. Rest in peace, Dr. Fauci. Now, obviously, Siraj is not a simp for Fauci, but so many people are. You can just go on sites like Redbubble and Etsy, and you can see Fauci prayer candles, Fauci bobbleheads, Fauci artwork, Fauci posters, Fauci costumes. And if you really want to see the pinnacle of all of this, you can watch the Fauci documentary, which I did for some idiotic reason, and he has a painting of himself above his desk in his office. You can get one of those too, in case you're wondering. Another woman tweeted something and said, Fauci is retiring. I'd like to offer him a hearty congratulations on a remarkable career. Few have been so wrong so often and yet continue to hold positions of power. And few have been so overtly narcissistic and yet commanded the admiration of half the country. Truly remarkable. It really is shocking. Like, I don't know how the man did it. I mean, I do know how the man did it because he instilled fear in the hearts and minds of every American and gained incredible government power and made the entire American government cucked to him. That's how he did it. In my mind, I see this as being part of the global plan to make us all incredibly dependent upon the government. He was just a pawn in that scheme and he benefited from it. And we all became dependent. Have you seen anything that happened in the last three years? And obviously there are many people outside of my corner of the internet who did not have this, you know, more based response to the news, which Tucker Carlson actually described perfectly in this segment. You just have to watch because it's super funny. Welcome to Tucker Carlson Tonight. Imagine the pandemonium at Soul Cycle Studios across the Northeast this morning when Tony Fauci announced his retirement. Ugly doesn't begin to describe it. Picture the chaos, if you can, in the organic chaga aisle at Whole Foods in Brookline. Try to envision the panic and hysteria that must have broken out at espresso bars in Edgartown, in Aspen, in Santa Monica, and Bethesda, as thousands of masked ladies in Lululemon discovered all at once that the one religious leader they still revered, their own even tinier version of the Dalai Lama, <laughs> had decided to retreat forever from public life. It was, ladies and gentlemen, the equivalent of a targeted nuclear device detonated over the most emotionally vulnerable elements of our most privileged population. You can picture the carnage, the wailing, the swooning, manicured hands clutched to breasts, then fumbling for Xanax in expensive handbags. I mean, he's making a joke, but he's not wrong. These people literally have worshipped Fauci for the last three years. It's the reason why bobbleheads and prayer candles exist in honor of him. They have literally not stepped out of their house until Fauci says that it is okay. I mean, how has our society gotten so weak, so soft-minded that you have to wait and get permission from like a five foot two, 81 year old man before you do anything in your life? It's sad. It is very sad. And while Tucker is joking about this, the best humor is honest. And this is 100% honest. He was right because the elite Democrats are all crying. I'm gonna kill myself! Especially some of our favorites like Barack Obama. He said, I will always be grateful that we had a once in a century public health leader to guide us through a once in a century pandemic. Few people have touched more lives than Dr. Fauci. And I'm glad he's not done yet. I don't really like that line, has touched 
more lives than Dr. Fauci? Yeah, he's touched some lives in not good ways. Maybe that was very tactful on Obama's part to not make it positive or negative because then people can read it however they want because he certainly has impacted some lives that did not continue living. And I'm sort of laughing when I say that, but it's because if I'm not laughing, I'm going to cry. President Biden from the POTUS account tweeted out and said, I know Dr. Fauci as a dedicated public servant with wisdom and insight honed over decades at the forefront of our most challenging public health crises. As he leaves this role, I extend my thanks for his service. America is stronger, more resilient, and healthier because of him. Literally none of those things are true. We are not stronger. I just said that we are literally weak-minded because we are at the beck and call of a five foot two little doctor man. We are not more resilient. People are still hiding in their homes, freaking out. They are socially inept now that they've been locked in their house for three years. And we are not healthier. Have you seen the obesity crisis in this country? Instead of saying, hey, take your vitamin D, take your zinc, go out and get sunlight, exercise your way through this pandemic, take care of your family. If you start getting sick, take some airborne, take some emergency. No, instead, go sit on your couch, watch Tiger King and eat fluffy coffee and feta TikTok pasta. <laughs> that was basically the advice that was given. So no, Biden, I reject your assumption. Now, the last one I have here, just a good one. He says, thank you, Dr. Fauci, for three decades of public service to America. Those of us who are not brainwashed by Fox stand with you. You were a voice of sanity amidst DT's chaos. You are a true American hero. I got brainwashed by Fox. Like, can you guys get a better tagline? Like, that is so outdated. And he's not a true American hero in any sense of the word. Uh, so I just want to wrap out this episode with a more uplifting message. This is a throwback from DeSantis, and he was kind of predicting this incredible moment, and he mentioned Fauci being kicked out of his post, but, you know, Fauci retiring, it still makes me just as happy. So, enjoy. Because sometimes people ask me, oh man, how come Florida, 84,000 jobs, the rest of the country, you know, what, what could be done to help the rest of the country? And I say, well, you know, the saying that I always think back, and it's a little bit of a flourish on how it's been used previously, uh, but a recession is when your neighbor loses his job, a depression is when you lose yours, a recovery is when Dr. Fauci loses his. Thank you and good night. Guys, we are adding new comment section content every single day, so make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and ring that bell so that you never miss a video. See you next time.